Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to answer the question, am I inflamed? What three laboratory markers can you utilize to see if you have inflammation in our body? This is meant for more acute inflammation, so let's get right into it. Acute phase reactants are inflammatory proteins that are elevated when there is stress to our body. Stressors can be tissue stress, like muscle tissue breakdown, infection, viruses, and bacteria, psychological stress, PTSD, food stress, such as dietary food proteins that cause inflammation in our body and create damage to the gut lining. Right? So any type of stress can create an acute phase uh, reactant elevation. So what is an acute phase reactant? CRP or C-reactive protein is produced through the liver when you process some of the cytokines through the liver and CRP will rise within four to six hours to, uh, from exposure and it will peak within 36 to 50 hours. Now the half-life is only four to seven hours therefore you can determine whether someone is getting better as well as determine if someone has inflammation. Lab range for CRP is zero to three. Now, most cardiologists and even functional medicine practitioners will like to see that lab um, marker below one. So there's very minimal or no inflammation. So we like to see it below one. So another <coughs> acute phase reactant is ESR or urethrocyte sedimentation rate. Okay, so this is another marker that you can utilize. ESR increases within 24 hours of exposure and can re remain elevated for days or, or weeks. Half-life is 100 hours and the reason is ESR or urethral sedimentation rate is dependent on fibrinogen and fibrinogen's half-life is approximately 100 hours. The range for ESR is 0 to 32. We like to see that below 10. So that's another marker. So this doesn't show that immediate uh, rise in inflammation like CRP does, uh, but it's a good marker to see if you have inflammation that's long lasting. Ferritin, okay. Ferritin is considered a storage iron. So you're supposed to have certain levels of ferritin in our body uh, to determine if we have iron deficiency, anemia, and those types of things. However, when ferritin increases, so there's more ferritin in the blood. That means there could be acute inflammation. Half-life is uh, six to eight hours, and lab ranges uh, go from 12 up to 300. Now, we like to see that lab marker below 150. So we want that storage iron or ferritin in the blood below 150, right? If, the, if that person has ferritin of like two, they can have iron deficiency anemia. Now, do not take iron if your ferritin is elevated. So if your ferritin is elevated and you're supplementing with uh, uh, oral iron supplements, it can create more inflammation or something we, we call a Fenton reaction. So when ferritin is high, we do not want to take iron supplements, right? So you want to make sure of that. Here's a clinical pearl. If your ferritin comes above a thousand, right? Like I said, the uh, lab ranges is 12 to 300. If your ferritin is above a thousand and you have an acute uh, reaction going on, but albumin is a marker of protein and albumin goes way low, right? That's an ominous marker. You need to be evaluated for any malignancies and so forth. So ferritin being very high above a thousand and albumin being low, you want to be checked um, to make sure you don't have any malignancies going on. All right, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.